Hey, uh, Suchet, uh, hopefully I pronounced that properly. Um, let me get started, right? And you're just going to find I'm going to ramble a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to bounce around as I see things. I'm going to get a little excited. I might swear. Um, I, I get into these kind of things. All right, so let's start off with um, your product page. That's the most important page in your store. Right, that's where people are making uh, decisions and deciding on what they're going to purchase and saying, yeah, I want to add to cart. So let's start there. No idea. Well, that's you know. So you got an error there, whatever that is. Um, this is taking way too long to load. I don't know what is doing that. This, this is taking way too long to load. I don't know what theme you're using here, um, but this is absolutely awful at the moment. That is incredible. I have never, literally, never seen a product page take as long to load. So let's see if we can figure out a couple things here. I'm bringing up. So I'm, I'm looking at the back end of your store right now. The code. On another window, so I got a window over here I'm looking at. Take it off screen again and see if we can see what is causing this. Got a flicky slider, a flicky viewport, flickety. Let's see what theme you're using. So you got bold in there, and they. So I'm not sure of your theme name because it's been changed. So there's a custom name on it. Um, let me see if I can. It looks like you might be using one of the out of the sandbox themes, just because of the file names that I'm looking at. And if that's the case, that means that this is an app, not in the theme. Um, so yeah, I don't know what's going on there. So let's just refresh the page, see if that helps. And see, I see. I saw the image. Right? And maybe it's this, maybe this error here is, is prompting what's going on. So I saw the image really quickly. So I'm going to do it one more time. See the image pop. Images, gone. Right? So the page loads in the beginning, and then, and then something happens. This is JavaScript that's happening right here. Right? So it's not in the liquid of the HTML of your website. This is in the JavaScript, which is probably an app that you've added on. It's doing some fun functional stuff, but it's broken. Um, so that's, you know, something needs to be fixed. So let's just go to another product. And see if we can get it to come up. And I won't criticize this page yet. All right, that one shows, and it stays, so we're good. All right. Um, I like the little "Made in the USA" seal. That looks like it's embedded onto the image. Yeah, that's embedded onto the image. Yeah, this one. Even, this is still taking too long to to load up. Um, your product photos are not that great. I would say right off the start, number one thing you can do is have better product photography. Now, product photography is not easy. Totally get that, right? And I don't know if you're reselling other people's products and, you know, this is the manufacturer's stuff, but the, the lighting in this, the reflectiveness, like, it's just not good photography. It's not bad, but it's, it's not nice. It's not good. It's just blah, right? Um, that angle's, you know, no good. So I'm actually guessing that you took these photos. I don't know why I'm guessing that, but whatever. Um, Number one thing you can do is make your product photography better. Um, and that's true for any store, right? Um, a lot of people spend a lot of time on things when the first thing they should look at is their photos. And then once their photos are improved, then start doing other things. Now, I also notice here as I'm sliding, right? So this image goes down to here, right? And then I hit a scroll and it goes up to here. So if I look at that, so getting your images all the same size is a nice consistency thing and, and a polish thing. Because let's look what happens on mobile when I do this. Um, let's go back to our first one. Yeah, see as I'm as I'm sliding. Let's refresh our page. As I go through this, if I hit the button there, right now the button has moved on me. Well, now it's moved here, right? So, you know, it's, it'd be easier now. I can always swipe, of course, but then also as I swipe, I've got to move my thumb. All right, so a consistency of your image size will help, you know, that, that experience a little bit. Let's go back to our desktop view. Um, all right, so I'm not a fan of the Add to Cart button below the product description. And this is a great example of why, is on this page here right now, I can't see the Add to Cart button, right? Because um, it's down here. 
So I would put the button above the description. I also, I don't even put the description underneath in this column. Like, well, you've got a two column layout going on here right now. So maybe you're not using one of the out of the sandbox themes. Um, but I usually put it full width underneath the product image and the product form. I put the description and the accordions there. But, you know, that, that's not that big of a deal if you want to just hold two accord, you know, this two column thing. I just personally don't do that. Because let's look at it again on mobile and see what goes on there. Yeah, see how far I have to scroll on mobile to get to it. Now, it did move the uh, FAQ underneath that, so that was a good thing that they're doing with that two-column layout there. All right. I like the fact you have a product description with some words in it. I haven't even read it yet. Um, but at least there's some content there. I mean, some, some people don't have any content there. They, should, they get a photo and they're done, right? Um, yeah, so this here, item is handcrafted in America. I, I get what you're trying to say there. So please don't accept robot-made perfection. I think you got that grammar backwards, right? So, you know, what a lot of people do with handmade things is they say, because it's handmade, there are variations in the product kind of thing. So, yeah, I just think this is bad grammar. I, I you know, item is handcrafted in America, you know, so each, each, so each one is going to have a little bit of variance kind of thing, which is the beauty of handmade products or something. That's the way I would say that. Um, site on similarly acquired. Okay, ready to ship today. Dimensions. Yeah, so why would I buy this thing? You are not, you're, not, you're not telling me why this product is so great, right? You got a couple of stats, like its style, um, its dimensions modular but you know who should be buying this for what purpose you know and you know back to our photos right i don't see it really in use in the photos that much it's just in place if that makes sense but not in use by the way i like the cantilevered style of that it's kind of cool I, mean, I, I would call it i would say it's actually mid-century modern not modern but that's just my take and i'm not a designer now oh so is that a mirror This one is different than this one, wherever it was. And this one looks like it goes farther over. So this is not the same product as this one. So there's confusion there, or I'm confused there. Let's put it that way. Um, so you, you need to be clear what they're buying, right? Can you buy it with it hanging over to the right? Or can you also buy it with it hanging over to the left? And if it's hanging over to the left, it looks like it goes even farther over. So, you know, that's very confusing. Um, and where does a credenza go, right? Is this for the living room? Is it for the dining room? Is it for the bed? Oh, yeah, see, that's a different product. Oh, wait a second. Oh, I see. I'm confused by the photos. It's not can See, I thought this was cantilevered. So I saw this photo and assume that the product ended here, right? Um, and it doesn't, right? This is just half the product. So I actually thought it had this cantilevered effect, which I thought was kind of cool, right? Um, the thing that draws me the most of this product is not real, right? So your photo, especially, especially your first photo, has to show exactly what they're getting. And this shows me exactly half of what I'm getting. It doesn't show me what I'm getting, right? So this looks to me like it's about three feet long. And then later on, I realize, oh, no, this thing is like six feet long. I, I, it's so long it doesn't fit in any of the photos, right? I, I can't find that photo. Right? So, so that, this, this is a completely different product in my mind than what I was looking at a minute ago. Um, let's go back to that first one. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. It just what's crazy is you know the accidental confusion that causes um, by cutting that off right there. It's, it's it's a much different product than I thought it was, right? Um, so you know the Uber point being your you know your photography needs to be accurate, right? And although this is accurate, it's deceiving if that makes sense. So what I was leading up to though is you know where do I use this and how do you know like 
is this meant for the living room, the dining room, and, you know, the bedroom? Now, the word credenza, that may mean enough to, to some people, they know where that goes, but other people may not, right? So I always try to, you know, pretend that, you know, my audience is either stupid or really, really distracted, however you want to say that, right? So you got to make things as, you know, drop-dead simple for them. In other words, one of the photos that you need is this in place, right? Is this in the living room? Is it in the dining room? Because I can't tell by these photos. It's just in a corner, right? Um, so that, you know, this is, here it is in place in, in situ and, you know, in its use case to help people understand that, oh, this is for this type of scenario or multiple scenarios. Like if it can be used in this type of scenario, you know, you can put it in the dining room and you can place your, you know, whatever on it. Or you can put it in the living room and do this with it. It can go behind the couch, you know, whatever kind of stuff. You're not helping people understand where and how they would use this in photos or in the description, right? And the description doesn't really sell me on this, right? Now, now here, here you are. You're charging $7,000 for this product, which let's just say is a little bit of money, right? And I get it. It's handcrafted. There's a lot of quality going on here. There's some good design. Right? It's worth $7,000. But the question I'm going to ask is, do you think someone's going to spend $7,000 based on the presentation of information that you've given here? Right. Um, if I'm buying a seven thousand dollar product, I actually would expect higher quality photography and a little richer description. Right. Not just the specky stuff, but like a little bit of a story behind it. Well, you know, tell me about the design. Who designed it? What is it you know, inspired by? What does it match? What does it go with? All that kind of stuff. Um, and, and really, let me make sure that I'm not. If it's on this page and I just haven't seen it yet because I haven't scrolled down. Um, no, it's not on the page anywhere. So, you know, if you're going to charge 7000 bucks for a product, you really got to sell it, right? And give people a story, right? And if you give them a story about this product, then they can repeat that story. And that's part of the, 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 the lore of the product. You know, when they buy it, they're like, oh, yeah, it's by this designer inspired by this thing. If you tell them a story, they're going to repeat it, and that's going to make this this product more fun, engaging, and valuable to them because there's a story for them to tell. When someone comes over and like, oh, I really like that new piece you got. They're like, oh, let me tell you the story about it, right? Well, here they can't tell a story about it because there's no story to tell. So um, that's that. Individual color swatches. So this is available in all these colors. And that's an addition. No, I don't think that's an additional charge. I think you're, I assume that this is a color swatch you send to them as a sample. Um, yeah, that's confusing as all heck, all right? So is this product available in colors? And if it is, right, my product photography doesn't lead me to believe that, right? Because all I see is one color here. So I assume it just comes in this color. Now, if it is available in other colors, great. Um, why don't you tell me that up here somewhere, right? Oh, see, yeah, here it is, color Washington blue. So maybe it is only in this color. If that's the case, why is this thing down there? Um, I don't get it, right? And the same thing with the share button. I don't think anybody uses share buttons. Haven't in, you know, a decade or so. So just get rid of that. It just takes up space nobody uses. Um, so that's that so far. I love the fact you have shipping on here. That's nice, especially on big products. I'm not even going to read it. I'm going to assume it says stuff. Um, returns. We do not accept returns, exchanges, or cancellations. Um, hopefully you explain that really well. Um, helpful guides. Visit our FAQ page for more detail. That's, that's not fun. Um, let's go to your FAQ page. So... See, your, your FAQ page is generic for your whole store, right? So here I am, I'm buying a $7,000 credenza. And I find out, oh, there's some helpful guides. This is great. You know, this, look at the service I'm getting for the $7,000 product. And then it drops me on a generic page that says, good luck, customer. Figure out what, which one of these are important for you. I'm like, do I have newly made goods? Is this vintage furniture? What, what, you know, so A, FAQs are not helpful guides, right? B... And, and by the way, <laughs> I just dove right in and just started critiquing the hell out of your site. So I apologize for that. That's just the way I do things. All I'm looking at in your site is how to make it better. Um, maybe at the end I'll talk about my overall, you know, why I think it's good and all that kind of stuff. But I, you know, I just get in and start 
critiquing because my goal is to help you, you know, get feedback to improve your store. So, um, sorry about that. Just the way I just dove in, I just realized I'm talking for a few minutes here and I'm just ranting and ranting. But here we go. So, helpful guides. You know, if it's an FAQ for a $7,000 product, right? Um, and maybe, you know, you would do it for, you know, you could have a tag that says, hey, this product is new or handmade or whatever. And based on that, I'm going to put this set of FAQs in here. So I wouldn't call us helpful guides because guides to me sounds like blog articles, you know, a, an article that's going to educate me, which, by the way, you should have. But that's another story. Right. But here, what I could see is the FAQ for this particular product. And I, I do this a lot in stores. We make product specific FAQs or product category, product type specific FAQs and put in some custom code to make that work out. Because, you know, once again, your your whole site should be head and shoulders above most of my clients' sites because most of my clients are selling $50 products. You're selling a $7,000 product, right? And and maybe, let me just check. Maybe I just ended up on your most, you know, they're all thousands of dollars, right? So, you know, basically you're selling Lexuses, right? And you need to look and act like a Lexus. And maybe you're even above a Lexus, by the way. You know, Lexus isn't the top brand in the world. You're not Bentley, but, you know, you're, you might be higher than Lexus. Um, so the only point is, right, you know, as you talk about, you know, you think about your brand, right? You have to elevate your brand. And and part of your brand is the quality, the presentation, the story you tell and all those kind of things. You've got to act like a, you know, Lexus plus, Mercedes plus type brand and not like a Toyota type or Kia type brand. So, um the fact you have no reviews is kind of a negative. Now, I don't put review because I think reviews are super important, right? And maybe some other of your products have reviews. Let's see, do you have reviews in the footer? No, I think I saw reviews on your homepage. Let's just go there. Oh, that's the shop. Let's go here. Let's see if we have a product with a review. I just want to see reviews for a second because reviews are super, super valuable, right? Um, yeah, so you got 4 out of 10 reviews, so that's, that's really good. I would actually have a reviews link in the footer. So people could see all the reviews because right now I can't click on this. If I click on it, it takes me to the product, right? I think you're using judge me here. I would also have three reviews across kind of thing. But if I, let's, I don't want to see a swatch review. Let's go. I don't want to see a brass. No, I want to see a, a full product review. Coffee table. That's the judge me. There we go. Let's go to this one. So be, because reviews to me are so valuable, right? I wouldn't hide reviews underneath uh, an accordion. I would put reviews maybe you know in the bottom center here and have it not you know expand close in an accordion, but always there. And the nice plus about that is once you do that, um, if there are no reviews, it won't show a review section, right? So one of the negatives is if you know the empty room syndrome where you have no reviews. So a second ago on that other page, it said reviews zero, right? And it's like, oh, nobody's ever bought this thing. That you know, maybe I don't want to be the first one to buy it, kind of thing. So don't remind them that it hasn't been reviewed by showing review zero. Put the reviews module on its own on the page, and then it just won't show, at least if you're using judgment like I think you are, um, then it won't show it by default if there are no reviews, right? Or there's a setting for that. Now, this one here has colors. That's nice. Now, oh, it's not nice. All right. So I'm buying this thing for $3,000, and I can't see it in the color that I want to see it in. And I don't know what's going on with this uh, um, image here, right? So it's just, yeah, see, the, the, the cropping of this image was not nice. It's not good. Not good at all, right? Um, now I can't close out of this thing. I can't find the close. Oh, there. oh, that is so unintuitive to me that that was the close button. I'm so used to being able to click over here, just click right there, right, and it just closes automatically. Or I see a click button up here, right, and I don't see one. This one's down here, which so there is one, right. But you don't want to do things differently than the way other stores do it because I'm used to doing it certain ways. And like I look at stores all day long, I didn't even cross my mind to look down here to close this thing. Um, so these colors, you know, A, you got to get, you know, better photography and then crop it better. And then all you got to do is go in Photoshop, right, and hire somebody to put this in all the different colors, right? Just, 
take one photo and make it, you know, color, 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 color change kind of thing. Super, super easy to do. Um, and, you know, for if you want me to buy a $3,000 product and I can't see it in the color that I'm going to buy it in, you know, it's just, that's not Lexus quality, right? That's not Lexus plus quality, right? So select a sheen, um, matte, satin, gloss. Default sheen is gloss unless other. So this here, where's my education on those choices? Yeah, so you don't explain to me what these look like and show me examples, right? Matte, satin, gloss, you know, down at the bottom here, I would have an infographic, matte, satin, gloss, show one product in one color, or this product in one color, all three finishes, and explain the differences between them. Maybe it's a little chart of pros and cons or whatever kind of thing, um, but let me see those things, let me understand those differences if you're going to have me make a choice. Now... It says default sheen is gloss unless otherwise specified, but gloss was not picked by default. Um, so maybe you can make it a little easier for the customer to make it. Well, I would actually make them choose it, but I would also do a different thing. Now, choose a custom color. So these aren't custom colors. And, and this here, custom colors are paid separately. Like, So here's where I get confused, right? Remember I said, you know, assume your customers are really busy or, or really stupid. This is one of those examples, right? If, if I look at this page for a few seconds, I can figure out, oh, these are my standard colors. Okay. If I want a custom color, I can say, you know, I want it to be that color there. And then down here, oh, this only refers to this, right? But somebody who's doing this quickly is going to go, oh, I love this gypsy pink. They scroll down, like, custom colors are paid separately. Like, this costs more? Like, they won't get it when they're, you know, quickly perusing your page. Um and what percentage of your customers are actually doing a custom color? Is it worth even promoting it kind of thing? Um, and then here it says custom. It says color custom. Why does it say that? Is that because I filled this in? I'm going to refresh the page. Yeah, it says color custom by default. And, and custom colors cost more, and they're paid separately. We're going to invoice me separately for that. And, and if I pick a color, standard color, it still says color custom. So this is just very confusing, very confusing. Um, and if you are going to have custom colors, why are they paid separately? Why can't you just charge right here, right now? Right? I want a custom color, add it to, add it to my uh, selection. I see that as a separate line item in my cart or as a is a line item option to, or an option to this line item in the cart, and I pay for it now, so I see it's, you know, 3050 plus 150, that math is all done, I'm checking out once, um, there's no need to pay for that separately. Um, and here we go, once again, it's confusing about this. So this one, you know, even less story and information than the other one, um, same feedback there, right? And what I normally do, by the way, is I put shipping returns at the bottom of the page and this kind of stuff higher up. And then you may also like, I hate in most stores, right? Now, in your store, what I could say, well, first of all, everything having a swatch, right? It's just horrible because everything's on sale or everything's special, right? If, if, you, if everything gets, so this is a special promotion or should be thought of and used as a special promotion, right? But if everything gets a special promotion, then nothing is special. Now, if this is about lead time and not promotion, and we're warning people, hey, this one's going to take a couple months, right? Um, this makes me think it's a good thing, where actually when I read it, it's a, it's a bad thing, right? So, you know, I, I love, by the way, the fact that, you know, lead time and what I would have is like a meta field or something uh, for your products, and I would actually be, you know, clearly calling it out um, by the add to cart what the lead time for this product is. Like, this one's available to ship immediately. This one has a lead time of 10 weeks. This is, you know, yada, yada, yada. You know, setting that expectation is a really, really good thing. I would do it a little more elegantly than that, right? But you may also like, what you may also like is good for is, so this product here, the faux bamboo, uh, are there other faux bamboo products that match this one? Is this part of a collection, right? So right now, all I see is you may also like. 
And here's a Henry Link Volley. Here, so here's a faux bamboo, right? This one doesn't say faux bamboo, although it looks like it is and looks like it's related. Like, what I would be doing is if this product is part of a set or a collection, I would be promoting it as part of a set or a collection. And let me give you a good example where we did this before. Um, in this store here, if I pick up on Final Girl, so this is these are just board games. This guy sells board games that are on Kickstarter. And a lot of them get out of stock, right, because they're Kickstarter games. They, they buy 100 of them. They, they only have an inventory of 100. Once they're gone, they're gone. So here you can see, you know, if I go to this product page, where the product's out of stock, you can get notified if it becomes available. But we also say is, hey, Final Girl, right? So we put the collection name up top. Shop all Final Girl games, right? So we let people know it's part of a collection. And if it's not part of a collection, there, that promo is not there. And then if we scroll down, we say, you know, so once again, shop, you know, all games. Here's all 34 Final um, Girl games. And if I click on one of them, so we have this concept of collection we created inside of, of our Shopify store. And we are cross-merchandising a collection once it's part of one. So now if we add this one to the cart. What we're going to do is, you can see i got two products in the cart here, Final Girl and Burn Cycle. And all the promos are for Final Girl because Burn Cycle is not part of a collection. All right? So we, we, we take this collection. Oh, there is a Burn Cycle collection. There it is down there. So we got Final Girl and Burn Cycle products because they're both part of collections. Um, and on the product page, right, so the point being, on the product page, I only show other Final Girl products down below in the promo. So for you, you might have this concept, you might probably have it already in your store, that here's my collections, right? Go shop the other products in this collection instead of a random set of things which may or may not be related to this one. Now, I see that this one's faux bamboo, this is faux bamboo. So maybe you're doing that already. This one just doesn't say faux bamboo. Um, but if that's the case, I would mar market this or merchandise this as, you know, related products or part of the same collection. Maybe you can name the collection, right? Let's actually see in our shop. Yeah, you don't even have the concept of collections in your shop that I can see yet, right? Maybe we'll see it later on. But I, I would think, you know, show me all products that match this collection would be useful for your customers. Now, you know, a lot of things I'm talking about here take a little bit of work besides a plug-and-play theme. Um, and I'm a big fan of not doing things in apps because apps conflict with each other and, and have confusion. Um, but, you know, once again, as you think about that Lexus Plus brand, right, that's the kind of work you do to bring that Lexus Plus brand to your customer and let them see that extra level of work that you're doing for them and, you know, letting them see the collections and all that kind of stuff. All right, so I think that's enough for your collection page for right now. Let's go up a level to your, uh, or sorry, that's enough for your product page. Let's go up a level to your collection, or to your collection page. Um, and I'm just going to look at dressers. So I just clicked on dressers. It says dressers, and it says, welcome to our collection of furniture and accessories. Right? So that's very generic and not specific to the dressers that I'm on. So, and, you know, this is just extra garbage, not useful at all. Um, so, you know, what, what, if you want to like a little welcome message thing, you know, we pride ourselves on quality and durability. I, I, there's other ways to do that. I'm not sure on the top of it. So I've just said I want to know about dressers, and I get this introductory stuff, right, which isn't about dressers. It's a little more generic. Um, and I'm being overly critical here on purpose, right? So filters, I love filters. You cannot get enough of filters. I wouldn't have them hidden behind an expanding thing. I would just, you know, show them right on the page. Um, your filters are by, so product type. I've already selected dressers. So your filters here, I just said I love filters. I hate the way they're implemented right now, right? And what I mean by that is I have just asked you for all dressers. And the first filter I see is consoles, credenzas, dressers. Right? No, I've already selected dressers. I should only see dressers here. So it looks to me like your filters, not sure what filter app you're using here. Your filters are your whole product category. Right? If I, if I click on credenzas and buffets, let me just see what happens. Now I have to close that? Oh, that's, oh, it does it below. 
Yeah, so I don't know if it, if it filtered until... So traditional vintage triple... So a dresser is also a credenza. I guess a dresser can be used as a condenza, credenza. All right, that's just confusing to me, but that also may be I'm an idiot too, right? Which is totally, totally fair. Um, and product type ready to ship, that's not a product type. That's a feature of one of your products, right? So you're going to want to put that content in a different place. The price range, the slider there, there's no need for that. Collection, so everything, let me hit apply all. Is everything the same? So you do have a collection. There we go. We're talking about that. All right. Emily, Faux Bamboo, and Campaign. I just want to see what a campaign collection looks like. Okay. Yeah, so that, so that collection thing might become a top-level um, feature, right? You know, you have shop, you know, you got, by, you got by, you know, furniture type. Another one might be by collection, right? Um, what's there between a style? You apply all. Yeah, you see how I'm opening and closing this? That's just a lot of work for me, right? Um, so what's the difference between a collection and a style? So I've got 94 dressers. I don't have 94 styles. So, you know, you need to enrich all of your products with the product data for your taxonomy. So this is your taxonomy, right? How you're going to allow customers to shop and navigate their products. So if you're going to do that, you're going to want to make sure that every product, you know, Let's just assume for a second that all 94 dressers actually have a style. Well, then make sure all 94 dressers have, have the style information, whether that's a tag or a meta field. Today, I would use a meta field to do this, not a tag. However, you're, you're bringing that to forward. Make sure all 94 products have that done to it. And that, it's true across the entire store, right? And then uh, length, width, that's nice. Age, newly made. Newly made seems like more words when you can just say new. Um, and is this all the colors? Because I think we are on a, a product before that had a lot more colors than that. Unless you're simplifying them to just be black. Black, gray, I like that. Blue, multi, green, pink. So you're missing yellow and orange. Because um, I, I usually do the, the rainbow, right? Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue. And for indigo violet, I just put purple. And then I add to that black, gray, white, brown. You've combined black and gray, which is totally fine. You've got white, which is totally fine. Um, you're not doing brown. So what are you going to do for brown, orange, and yellow products? What bucket do they fall in here? Um, and, and maybe you figured that out, and I'm just not seeing it at the moment, which is, which is fine. So let's get rid of that. Na yeah, that navigation on that up, down, up, down thing on filters is hard. Um, so this on the product pages, it's a lot of products. Okay. Six pages. I guess this has got 94 dressers. So sometimes it's in, so this one's in pink. Let's just see what that looks like. So hot. So I'm picking a color on that one. On other ones, I don't have to pick, or I pick a color at the product level. So on this hot pink one, as an example, let's see if we sort by... Let's see, let me see before I do this. This is the Henry Link Foe. Uh, I'm going to sort by title ascending. And I'm going to look for Henry Link Foe. Yeah, Henry Link Foe. So it's only available in that one color. Okay. And that's ready to ship. See here, I've got... 10-week lead time. Oh, you're going to have to wait forever for this product. This one, ready to ship now. And they're promoted in the same way, right? Um, so that's, you know, confusion to me. I wouldn't have any of the, the shipping stuff in here at this. At, at, I wouldn't make, I call these product stickers. I wouldn't put product stickers for the shipping stuff. I would have it in the filters. And let's see if it was in the filters. I don't remember. Yeah, I would have, you know, ready to ship... Um, as a feature inside of your filters, just like you do in your, your shop menu. There was a ready to ship I saw somewhere. Um, yeah, right there. Right? And notice everything that is ready to ship doesn't have an equal treatment. So this one's ready to ship. This one's ready to ship, but it doesn't say anything. So there's a lack of completion of 
augmenting your product data with however you're doing it with you know meta fields and tags and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, here's an example of a, a bad photo where I've got this glare thing going on over here and these shadow things going on over here. Okay, so we are looking at our collection page. I'm just going to look at another one. We're going to go to China cabinets. You're not doing a second image, which is totally fine, right? I'm actually a fan of not doing that. Um, now, so one of the things here is this is a decision-making page where I'm trying to decide which one of these products do I want to look more at, right? So it's helpful, right, if, well, how do I make a decision here? And, and that's why the filters are probably the best way to do that. Oh, where'd my filters go? Oh, do not tell me. Oh, yeah. So look at this, right? I'm scrolled down to the bottom of the page and I click filter and I can't see it because this is sticky, right? But the filters, the drop down menu is not sticky and I have to scroll up to that. So that's really unintuitive, right? And I'm also not a fan of sticky headers, right? Because, you know, I've only got so much screen real estate and why do I need this to be taken up? Screen real estate, re, screen real estate the whole time, right? Um, I, I usually don't do sticky headers, but here, as I'm trying to, how how can you turn this page into a decision making page? Because right now, right now it's just a, let's go back to the '94 the dressers because it's a it's a better example. Right? What a lot of stores do. And, and this is an example of that, right, is they just do a list of their products, right? So th here's a list of all the products. And the customer's got to look at them all, but now I've got six pages of products to look at. And it's a lot to wrap my head around. And that's why filters are really good, right? So filters start saying, oh, I want things that are, you know, whatever. Size is probably a great one for you, right? You know, in, in this one here, I would have your filter show up on the page, on the side, always there. And then I would sort them by what's important by product category. For in this example, I think size would be important. I think color would be important. So I'd move those to the top of the filters instead of this product type, which is, they're all, they're all dressers, right, kind of thing. So if, if size is the most important, you know, then I can say, all right, I want something that's, you know, 25 to, to 50 inches. Now I still got 32 of them, right? So what's the next most important thing that people are going to look at when making their decision? And the question I'm leading up to is, do you have enough filters for me to narrow down to the choices, right? So right now, maybe style is the most, you know, the next thing I'm going to pick on or by color, right? So yeah, I'm looking for things that are blue. And now I'm going to apply. There's only one blue dresser in that size. So if I'm looking for this size and I want blue, here's my choice. So now I'm down to a... a small enough set that I can make a decision. Right? Now it's a question of, do I like this one or not? But the thing you need to think about is, do you have the right filters? Are there enough filters here? So the, the right and enough are different, right? So for example, you know, the price one, most of your customers are going to be price insensitive at these price points, right? Um, maybe they do want to see that, but they can see that on, the, on the, the collection page themselves kind of thing. They can also sort by price. Um, do you need to have more filters about your products? For example, I see some, let's just go back to here, right? So I'm going to call this a natural finish, right? These are natural finish. This looks like it's painted. This looks like it's lacquered. And I'm, I might be wrong in these things, right? But maybe finish is a filter type. And let's see, did you have something close to it? No, there's... There's nothing. So this, I'm just looking at your just looking at your 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 page, seeing some differences between your products, and saying, oh, maybe we could create a filter about this. Um, and if you look at, so let's just go here. I'm going to assume you found me through my podcast. Um, one of my most recent podcast episodes, right? Easy yet powerful filters in your Shopify store, right? Listen to that one. Um, because it explains how to implement filters, like you know, making meta fields and all that kind of stuff. So I, my guess is right now you need some additional filters to the ones you have that are maybe even more important than the ones you have to help me make a decision on this page, right? Because there's so much choice. There's so many options here. 
you know, besides going in and out of every product across six pages, how can you give me some, you know, more filters? You've already got some, right? They're there. But how can I have some more that are even more useful to help me make that decision of what, I'm, what I actually want to look at? All right, so that's your collection pages. Um, and that's enough on those for now. Now, um, let's look at your navigation. So, and I'm a big fan of shop not being one button on, the, on your top nav, right? Uh, you're asking this button to do... So your whole store is about shopping, right? All you want people to do is buy, right? And it only gets one link in your navigation, all right? This is kind of shopping, but that's about an account relationship thing. I would put that in the footer. Consultation, that is shopping. I would keep that in the top level nav. FAQ, that is not about shopping. That's about questions. I would move that to the footer. Blog, not about shopping. I would move it to the footer. About, I would keep here if you're the designer, right? If you made these products, like the only, here's the way I say it. I tell my clients, the only time you're about is at the top level is if it's a major differentiator in your product. And that's usually for artists. I have one store where they're making uh, grass-fed, you know, high-quality beef, and they want to be the Bentley of beef. Um, we're probably going to put their button in their header. The only ones I would keep in the header right now, and maybe maybe you are the designer for a lot of these, and you want to be up there, like about the artist, about the designer. Um, I would keep consultation, and I would break shopping out into multiple buckets, and that gives you more room to do some merchandising in the in the header nav for shopping, right? So you could have a category, you know, new arrival. So you could have you know top level categories that are you know bedroom, dining room, you know living room, collections, and all those kind of things, and then do more in those, right? And actually, I'm surprised to see this over here. So you buy used furniture, even though you're selling a lot of new, handmade, high-quality furniture. That's just that's one of those throw a wrench in things. You know, would be I'm not even going to go down that road at the moment, um, because this is about shopping, right? This thing says shop, and now it's sell, which is the exact opposite of shop, right? So, but I would break this out, and that way, will you give yourself some more more wiggle room so you could have a section just let me show you a real example of this right let's go to flnb um here right i got a category for beds and look i can shop by product and beds i can shop by material i can shop by style i can shop by brand i can shop by color all in beds right same thing for bath now these guys aren't selling furniture they're selling linens right but in bath shop by product shop by style so they can start their shopping experience in a number of different ways same thing for you is what are the different ways that they could start, start their shopping experience for bedroom? By product type is what you have. So you could do color. You could do finish. You could do you know new versus vintage, all those kind of things. Um, so I would break that out a little bit. And also, let's see what happens when I click on your shop link. So you take them to an all page, right? And I'm not a fan. And in your store, you know, I, like your bedroom, let's say what happens you go to bedroom. Yeah, you take them to a collection. Same thing, I bet, with dining room, you take them to a collection. So what I would do in this case is I wouldn't take them to a collection. I would take them to a list of collections page, right? And what that looks like is, let's go here and go to bed. Notice I take them to a page where I say, hey, bedding, right? Do you want sheets? Do you want duvets? Do you want... So I don't drop them into all because there's way too many products on this, on this all collection. But if they want to see all, by the way, right, usually at the bottom somewhere, or where they put it in this store. Oh, maybe we didn't do it in this one. But usually we do a you know shop all in case you do want to see all kind of thing. Oh, that was at the top. Sorry. Shop all betting, right? If you, if you do want to see all, we'll give you this big, long list that has hundreds and hundreds of products in it, right? Um, so if you want to see everything, great. And notice the filters, right? These filters are very applicable, right? Th this filter set is just for betting. We have a different filter set for bath. We have a different filter set for table. Um, but you know, these are all the things that you know, were important for the customers to, at this level. So if they're like, oh, I only want silk, right? And then, you know, so, and then they can see the silk things for bedding kind of stuff. So for you, I would have, you know, your top level links take you to a, a higher level page instead of a collection of everything. And that page Don't like that. So you got some contrast issues with I can't see that text right there. Um, just confusing. And that I don't like that parallax effect. I do a lot of I don't likes in this this video. Um, so 
what you want, and you see this at the top of the page, right? I've, I've just clicked to see whatever, I forget what I haven't clicked on, bedroom dressers, and I got all this information up here in my way, right? If you're going to show products, show products. If you're not going to show products, engage them with an informative decision-making page, right? So nothing up here helps me make a decision. It may be good information about the products, right? Which I would, by the way, move to the product page, right? But at, at this top level, when I click on shop, on shop, bedroom, right? I would want to see a page that helps you make decisions. Hey, for bedroom, we have these types of products. Or for bedroom, they have these types of collections. For bedroom, we have this, you know, here's what you have to think about when making your choice for your bedroom. Which choice do you want to make? You want to turn a, a list of products, replace it with a decision-making page that may be a little educational also. Hopefully that makes sense. So that is um, the shop. So I would expand that out and I would, you know, enrich the, the product data so that you have more ways that people could start their shopping experience. Um, let's go to your about page. Love it. I love, I assume this is you. I love the fact you're showing a picture of yourself. So many people don't do that, right? Um, so that's great. I love how personal this is. Like you're 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 showing you know you're, you're you're willing to show your ignorance, right? Like I didn't know where Casper was. Um, that's great. Divorced, right? Immigrant, like you're just laying it all out there. That's beautiful. Well done. Not everybody does that. And what I love is, you know, I always tell small brands like yours is like, if people wanted to buy, you know, a big known brand, they'd go to Ethan Allen or they'd go to you know Walmart or they'd go to you know Amazon, whatever. And I know those brands aren't competitors to yours, but, you know, they would go to those big brands, right? The reason they're not looking at those places is they want to buy from a person, not, not a company, right? So you need to make your brand personal, and you're doing that. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I would even do it some more, right? So, you know, I see a consultation thing here. I haven't even looked at that yet. But, and here's, I guess, one of your pieces. This looks like it's in the showroom, right? Yeah, this is your showroom, I'm guessing, or your warehouse. You know, like, show me in your life. Show me your house, right? So what, you know, what, what you're selling here is you're a tastemaker, right? So show me your taste. Show me your house. Give yourself even more street kit. And I'm assuming you have a, a nice-looking house, right? If you don't, fake it, right? Um, also, if you have kids, if you have pets, you know, anything you can do to make yourself human. Do you have interest outside? Show me, you know, you playing pickleball or something or, you know, whatever, you know, double down on what you're already doing really well here, which is telling a story about yourself. And just, you know, throw in a couple photos. You know, my photos aren't as high quality as yours, but I'll give you a real example, right? If I go to my About Us, I don't have kids. I do have dogs. Um, I, here's me coaching kids, right? I don't have kids, but I, I, I coach them, right? So this has nothing to do with my work, and I bitched about your photos taking forever to load up, and look how long mine took, right? Um... But there's me, and I'm coaching kids, and I'm just trying to make myself a little more human, right? People look at this like, oh, that's so cute, right, kind of thing. So it's not just, you know, Scott, this guy who just rants about websites all day long. He's actually a human being and cares about other people, right, and, and sp gives his time to, you know, help coach kids and that kind of stuff. So, you know, do, you're doing a great job, great job with this. Do even better, right? Take it to the next level. Right? Exp expand out a little bit. If you can, if, if there's you know some stuff you're willing to share or show or you got some fun photos or whatever, do a little bit of that. I'm also a huge believer in video. Uh, let's just go, you know, show you that example here, right? And you're, you're about as us. I bet you come across really nice, um, you know, just based on the humility I saw in, in your thing. What I do here is, and we have a video where my clients did a little bit of testimony, and then there's me, right? So, you know, I had someone interview me and edit the video and all that kind of stuff. And I'm the least good looking person you'll ever see in a video, but I'm putting myself out there, right? You get to get a sense of who and what I am. And the nice thing about that is, you know, a lot of people like, like the way I talk, like, oh, you're straight to the facts. Other people hate it, right? Absolutely hate it. But by them, you know, getting a real taste for my personality, they get to go, I like the way this guy thinks and talks, or I don't. And then they, you know, choose to work with me or not, right? And like on your consultation side of things, I bet you have a way that you approach things 
that you know appeals to some people and may not appeal to other people and you know it's a nice way to you know i i just video is a great way to tell a story building a brand is all about telling a story your about page is the first place that your storytelling is happening the most important place you're doing it so if you could throw a video in here it'd also be really nice right um but that's that's really nice i, I like this about page now, like I said before, if you're the designer of the products, I would leave this in the header. If you're no offense at all, but if you're just the owner of the store, I would move it to the footer, right? Um, so that's all good. Now let's look at blog. I would never put the blog in the header, but blogs, blogs are really important, right? Think about the blog. So the way I, the reason I say that, why do you have ads on this? Wow. That feels, does not feel Lexus Plus brand to me at all. Right? That, that feels kind of cheesy. Now, they're your own products, which took me a second to realize, by the way. I just saw them as ads, right? Um, but you're using an ad engine, which you're paying for on your own blog, which is, in your Shopify store, right? It's not a different URL or anything I missed here, no. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't do that. It feels cheap. Um, now, so what I was saying is your blog is meant to draw people to your website, not engage people once they're on the website, most usually, right? So it's an SEO play, right? So, And, and I'm a big believer in content marketing, SEO, and all that kind of stuff. So... What you want to do here is, you know, because of that nature, because it's to draw people to your website, not engage them, I wouldn't put it in the header. Now my header just changed. Why did my header just change? Is this, did you hide this on a different website and you're just doing some funky stuff with DNS? Yeah, so this is your it's a WordPress site. Um, so I would um, put your blog on Shopify, right? And because then we can do way more powerful things, way more powerful things instead of having it on a separate site. So right now, so A, if you're going to have it on a separate site, it's got to be the same header, right? But I would put it on the on the same, I would put it in your Shopify store. Yeah, I didn't realize. So yeah. Oh, it's the, resp the URL changed. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. See, you're spending crow. Yeah, so separate separate site, <clears throat> not a good thing. I would put it in the same store because now if I go and do a search on your site, can I search? Yeah, so now you know if I do a search for uh, bamboo. I'm only going to see products. If you have your um, blog articles in your Shopify store, they could show up also. So if you had useful articles about, you know, how to do this or how to do that, you know, how to fix a scratch in, in your credenza, right, kind of thing. If I search on your website, I can't find it. If you put it, if you put your WordPress site into your Shopify store, then you can. And then you can also do things that are really cool. And I'll, I'll show you an example of that here. Let's go to your you know, product page, let's assume for a second you have content about this product, like how to fix a credenza scratch, right? You could have the blog article show up how to fix a credenza scratch, or even better, because that's a post-purchase type of thing. You could have a, you know, how to, make, how to purchase the best credenza blog article, right? And you could go to your, let's go to your credenza page, right? You could list all your products at the top like you do, and at the bottom you could show, you know, three blog articles, about how to purchase the best credenza, right? You know, the 2023 guide to the best credenzas. The, you know, should you pick, you know, vintage or, you know, natural finish or lacquer and those kind of things, right? You could, if you're using that content and it's a good buying decision making content, right? Um, then you can incorporate it into your store if those blog articles are inside of your Shopify platform, right? So you could, you know, and then, 
vice versa, right? You could do the exact same thing and you could go to a blog article right here. And on the blog article, right, you could, let's bring it up. Oh, wow. Your, yeah, see, your ad engine isn't even your products all the time because we were just on FLMB before. They're doing, they're doing remarketing just like you're doing, right? So um, you don't want to draw people to your website and then send them off to FLMB, right, in my humble opinion. But down at the bottom here, if we get all the way to the bottom, you could have a list of products, right? Shopify products with a Shopify entity with a, with a buy now button and, and, or add to cart or take into a collections, right? You could integrate this way better so that you, you, know, you attract people with this blog content from SEO and other sources. And then you engage them into a shopping experience directly, not indirectly, right? Hopefully that all makes sense. All right, so that's the blog, FAQ we mentioned before. I like the way it's structured like that, little nav, that's cute. Um, consultation. Yeah, I, I saw a consultation, and I was immediately thinking um, that it was more like you were going to help people design their, their home. Now, maybe that is what you think. Like, so, so color design, hardware consultation, $200. Use for your, pro I like this. So this is, this is your lost leader, right? And, and this is exactly, <laughs> the service I'm providing you right now is exactly this, right? So I, I like your thinking here, right? So what you're saying to people is, hey, if you don't want to you know, buy a $7,000 piece of furniture with me yet, Engage me for 200 bucks, you know, see if you like working with me. I'm going to give you some value out of that, right, kind of thing. So I'm just, you know, wondering, this isn't a top-level nav item then, right? This is more of a, hey, you don't know what to do, still having trouble making decisions. So, like, on the bottom of collection pages, you know, having troubles deciding on the right color, get a free, you know, or get a... Get a uh, you know a design consultation, not free, but you know you have people pay you for that kind of thing. It totally, ma totally makes sense. Um, it just to me, this isn't worthy of top level, right? I it's totally great idea to have, and you should keep it, you know, as a product and service. I would just think about how do you better market that. You don't want to put it on every single product page. You know, people are trying to buy a seven thousand dollar product. You don't want to throw a two hundred dollar consultation in front of them instead. But on a collection page where they haven't made a decision yet, um, you could do it there. You could think about the right ways to do that and right places to do that. You know, this is abandoned card emails are an absolutely fabulous place to put this kind of thing. So I like this. My only point is it's just not worthy of being up there. Now, as I look at this, you know, what you might want to do is, is give yourself a little street cred, right? So if we look at mine, right, go back to the example here. Um, and you're like the fourth, fifth person. This is a new thing for me, right? But I've got, I've got reviews, right? And I say it's, you know, it's with Scott, right? So I give you my name, and then I show you some examples of what this product is going to look like for you, right? So for you, let's see if you're... Is this with you personally, right? You're the expert, right? You're the store owner, right, kind of thing. If it is, put your name in there, right, um, kind of thing. And if you, if you have people that have done this already, let's get some reviews and stuff like that or get some testimonials, that kind of thing, um, in here. Were there any reviews? No, there's no reviews. Um, so just make people realize who's going to do this with them. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's you, right? You're even using the word I there, not us. Um, so just, you know, flesh that out a little bit. You know, people like, oh, Suchetta so is this expert in this place. She's been doing this forever, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to get, you know, a consultation with her. Or, you know, it might be with a member of your team. But just be clear about that. Who is it? Um, but I like this. It's a great idea. Uh, trade account. I'm, not, I'm assuming this is wholesale. You've got a form for that with Hulk apps. Um, with no explanation. 
oh, you're now a husband and wife team. So by the way, right? I saw the divorce part, ex-husband, right? So you, you might want to end that story with, with a, you know, in here, right, with this. And, and you know, and show the husband and wife, right? You could talk about how, you know, you're down, you know, this happened. But, you know, look look now. Now, now I've got this fabulous business helping all these people and my clients do this thing and enrich their lives and their homes, which just brings me so much joy. And now I'm even, I've even got my own home with my new husband kind of thing. It might be a nice way to, to bring that story around kind of thing. Um but that got me off on a tangent. So we were here. No, we were. Oh, we were on the trade account. So what is a trade account? Is that wholesale? Um, or is it something else, right? So I would just put a little explanation here. Not much, just a little bit, right? Who Who is this right for? Is this just to buy your products for, you know, no tax, right? Tax-free. Is there going to be a significant dif discount when I do? Am I buying at wholesale prices? Or am I getting, you know, friends and family discount? Like, is it 20% off or 40% off? Or is it just tax-free, right? Th those kind of things. So just be a little bit clearer about what this is. And like I said, I put that in the footer. And if it's wholesale, I would call it wholesale. If it's, you know, you know, designers, if it's for designers, you know, because they're going to register with their tax ID, then I would just, you know, for designers kind of stuff. Like if we go here again, right? We actually have, if I remember correctly, design trade program, right? Estate and yacht managers. So they, they've got, these aren't wholesale programs, but they do have programs for these people, right? So just be a little bit clearer about who this is. Um, so once you do your, your shop thing, expand it out I, you know, with more buckets at the top, I would not duplicate it down here. You do have the Swatch Gallery. Um, oh, I don't, that's different. That's not what I expected to see. I expected this to be your Swatch product. This is just photos of the colors. I like that. I like that. Um, it takes forever to load. That's because there's a lot of content on there, and you probably have an app that is um, open image and new tab. Let's take a small image of that, okay? Um, but I would think about how to use this. I like this. You know, I would think about how to use this a little bit better inside of your product page, right? Um, either have it in the product page or expose it somehow in the product page, all that kind of stuff. Um, let me close that heat open that tab up we're just going through your footer links hardware did i see a hardware accessory uh, hardware up here no there's accessories hardware okay yeah so this is sort of a uh list of collections page i i'm not a fan of putting it over the image i, I put it under but that's just a design choice so just click on one of these and see what they look like Um, about we talked about blog we talked about FAQ refund policy let's just see what you do with the policy pages you're going straight to the policy page or showing the policy raw which is fine um, what I do just because you know remember you're the Lexus Plus brand I actually wrap this in a page put a header in it you know a header image kind of thing let's see what we did for FLMB give you a feel for that we're on the policy page. Where is policy? I can't even find it in here. There we go. Privacy. Oh, this one we didn't wrap with a header, but we, we made it full width instead of the half width kind of thing. Um, and we used the, uh, the HTML classes for heading. Where these, this is just bold text, right? Um, just, it just looks a little bit better, right? Not the most important thing at all. We're nitpicking now. Oh, we've been nitpicking for a lot, probably. Um, newsletter. I hope you have Clavio. Please, please have Clavio. Let's look at your contact page. Your contact page is really, really light. What I like to show is, and I can, you, know, you do it over here, we're a husband and wife team in St. Louis, Missouri. So... I think I saw something where you have a 2,000-foot facility. So I would show your address, right? And I would, if you have a warehouse, I would show your warehouse. Um, I'll give you a real example here, right? So let's go to Game Steward. And let's go to their contact page. 
this is their warehouse. They actually, they, they, they have their own warehouse. They bought it, right? Now, we did Photoshop the uh, logo onto the side of the building, right? They, they did not put a big thing on the side of the building, but we actually show their warehouse. Because that gives them legit, legitimacy, right? It's not operating in someone's basement. And that whole warehouse is the, they do so much business. They, they do a massive amount of business. It's full of board games, right? So, and we actually show their location, right? I like showing the location and I always zoom out far enough so you can see an ocean, right? Um, which is really hard when people are in, you know, the Midwest. Um, so for you, we might not zoom out that, but I want people to easily, easily be able to say that's in the United States, right? Most of your customers are in the United States. Being from the United States is important when you're in the United States for shipping reasons, for cultural reasons, all sorts of reasons, right? And you're not selling, you know, cheap Chinese crap. If you are selling Chinese crap, you have a quality bar, an American level quality bar over the top of that, right? So I like on the contact page, you know, showing, you know, showing your location, showing your physical facility if you have one. I would also link to your FAQ page from here. Um, and I would, you know, also be a little more friendly. Like you don't mention your social stuff here. You don't have an email address. You don't have a phone number. Um, do you allow people to call you? Um, it's, and that's, by the way, that's a big trust thing. If you let people call you, you're, um, you're, you're a lot more legit. You're a lot more um, authentic. You're a lot more real, right? I trust you more. Um, so, you know, beef up your contact page a little bit with that type of content. Now, what I'm asking myself right now, yeah, let's go to your homepage and see what you tell me here. I left this for last on purpose, right? Because a lot of people start their website at the homepage. And then, you know, and I, I always start designing a website at the product. I work at the bottom and then go up, right? Oh, and before I do your homepage, let me just actually add a product to your cart and see what that looks like and your checkout. Mm -hmm. I got that problem still. And that's just going to break that page. So we're going to go to a different product and hopefully get something we can add to the cart here. No, oh, that's going to break the page. Just go to a piece of hardware then. See, I can't even buy your, your store right now. Certain products. It's, I'm sure you'll be able to figure out, you know, what, what that app is doing and fix that. But let's just add something that I assume doesn't use the app. Add to cart. So you have the flyout cart, which is okay. I, I like the page cart um, a lot. Because then you can do some merchandising on that. So when people go to that cart, they could see, and I would take them to that page cart when they add something to the cart. And then they, you know, you could do the thing that I showed you before, like on the game steward where, oh, you bought, you know, something that's in this collection. Let me show you other things in that collection too. Um, let's go to checkout. Yeah, so this needs to be branded, right? You, you've you You don't have your your logo up here. These colors don't feel like they were the same from the website. Let's see. You got orange. So you got orange here. Oh, you do have orange there, so that's good. And you are using black for a lot of colors. So it's just the logo. And I don't know if this is a color that's on your website or not, but I would make it one that's on your website if it's not. I also like changing this piece of text right here to or use your credit card because it just confuses. I don't know why Shopify doesn't do that, um, but I just change that to or use your credit card. So, so that take me out. Yeah, there, see, yeah, on this page here, I'm not a fan of the estimate shipping thing, but I would have some merchandising here like, <clears throat> hey, here's, you know, furniture with square ring poles and that kind of stuff. Before I get back to your, your homepage, I also don't see on shopping, sets. Like, you know, if I'm going to buy dressers, you know, what if I wanted to buy a low and a high that were a combined product set? You, you don't have product sets in here, right? Um, which is a, a layer between, you got collections. You don't have collections, but I have this, this idea that I'm seeing of collections, not Shopify collections, but collections of, you know, furniture that goes together thematically, right? In between collections and individual pieces, you would have sets. Like here's the you know dining room set, or the uh, the bedroom set of you know a high dresser and a low dresser and two end tables or something like that, right? Um, 
I would think that that type of product assortment here would be a good way for you to merchandise your products also. So now let's go back to our homepage. So here I am, I'm on a 32 inch monitor, which most of your customers will not be. Maybe if they're shopping for expensive furniture, they might be on a big monitor, but you can see your image goes below the screen, right? I have to scroll before I can even see anything. So I wouldn't make this image so big. Let's see what it looks like on the homepage in mobile. So you got a different image, same, same type of image, but I, I like the fact that you're, you're doing something special for mobile also. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. That's okay. Now, I don't like the way that it says www.theresplendentcrow.com. Right? I'm already on that site. I don't need to know that again. It makes me think that you use this for something else and just put it on your homepage. Uh, Yeah, see, even you know, right here, the resplendentcrow.com thing. Now, free shipping on all furniture, that's cool. Um, I don't know what this means up here. Does this mean you've sold products in Florida, Texas, and the Northeast? What, what is that text about? I'm confused, right? And, and here's the thing. I didn't even look at that before. I don't know if it's on other pages. Um, oh, that takes me to that other website. Let's just go to consultation page yeah that's on every page right i don't know i don't know what it means it's on every page right so a lot of people think that every customer comes to their their home page and most don't right in a good store less than 25 percent of your traffic will come through your home page um because you've got you know campaigns you should never have a campaign you should never have any merchandising or marketing you do off your site to send to your home page it should always go to something a, a level in or a couple levels in, right? So you got, if, if your most important message you want to get across to people is that you have free shipping for all furniture, then why wouldn't you put that up here? Right. So, and, and what I like to do is on this banner image, I'm not trying to sell people. I'm not trying to merchandise. I'm not trying to get them to click to the next page. I'm trying to make them understand if they're on the right site or not. And by the way, why is this paper airplane? I, I, it just doesn't make sense to me. It's like, to me, a gratuitous graphic, and I don't understand why. Right? But what I would do here instead is, I, I call it a you are here map, or you are here, here sign. Right? Is What is it that you sell, and who is it? who are you selling it to? For example, I'm a college student. And I'm looking to get some furniture for my dorm room. Should I, am I the right customer for you? And of course, the answer is no, right? Um, I'm a 50-something uh, married person with a household income of $500,000, and I live in Miami Beach. Am I the right person for you? Yes, right? So what you want to do here is put a stake in the ground of what it is you sell and who it's meant for, right? So, and it might be something as simple as, you know, elevate your home to the level of luxury. I would never use anything I use, you know, the words I use for your words, right? But I'm just trying to illustrate a point, right? Is, you know, are, are you an Ikea competitor? No, right? So you're, you know, that's why you're not for the college student kind of thing. So what you want to do is say, hey, folks, we got the highest quality. We got the brightest colors. We got the best design, handmade, whatever, you know, bespoke, craft, custom, whatever the right words are, so that people come to your website and go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and, then you start, and then you start setting the expectation for people of what it is you are and, you know, the bar that your, your brand is, is, is at, right? So, you, and what you want is people come in and go, oh, no, that's not for me and leave. Um, because you're not for them, right? So what I would do here is come up with the you are here sign. I'll give you a real example of that. So this, remember I mentioned the Bentley of meat before, right? And these guys are literally trying to be the Bentley of meat, right? And so we came up with the best tasting steak ever, which is a huge steak in the ground, pun intended. Um, so, you know, we didn't say, you know, grass, because they started off, it was grass-fed, grass-finished. And I'm like, well, why? Why, why is that important? They're like, well, it, it improves the quality. I'm like, why is that important? It improves, improves the taste. Their customers care about the taste of their, of their meat. 
not about the ethically ways that it's, it's raised and all that kind of stuff, right? That, that's just all a means to an end. But the point being is, if you're looking for the best tasting steak ever, you're in the right place. If you're looking for um, a cost-effective comp- comp- competition to Costco, you're in the wrong place. So these guys are putting the steak in the ground. Uh, guy, guy and guy is the husband and wife team. Um, they're putting a stake in the ground of who and what they are. And let's actually just show you their about page two. We're still working. This is a site in progress, right? Um, but here, you know, they actually, oh, they've, this has changed since I last talked to them. I, I, I told them I wanted to see this. So they just had a picture of them, husband and wife, and now they added in their two kids. They're showing dogs, right? This, this is a family. These are people. And there's other employees at the company kind of stuff. Um, that's, that's actually, they're progressing nicely there. But for you, What's that stake in the ground for you? You know, what do you, what does your brand stand for? And, and I would, you know, think about that, come up with, you know, a five word, you know, phrase. And it's not a full sentence. It's not a paragraph, right? Keep it nice and short. It's hard to do that, right? But I, and I would put that here and I would have an image that represents that, right? So right now I see a tiny, kind of shiny object with, you know, an okay cropping with a transparent to a transparent background, with from gratuitous effects, three gratuitous effects, right? I got this, you know, graphic, which is different than this graphic, which is different than this texture, and this texture is different. Like, it's just thrown together. This is not Lexus Plus brand, right? So what I would do instead is I would have an aspirational in-home image of your furniture, right? If you want your house to look like this, and not house, your, if you want your home to look like this, you wouldn't see these words, right? But this is what the picture's saying. If you want your home to look like this, then you're in the right place. And that picture should include a house that looks like your average customer or your target customer's house, right? So, you know, I live in San Diego in a beach community. My house is a piece of crap, and it's worth a ridiculous amount of money, right? But it's a piece of crap, right? You would never use my house, even though it's worth tons, right? But, you know, you want that, you know, not McMansion, but you want, you know, a, a high-end, high-quality house, big open spaces, right? And that's a really, you know, if you have those customers, you know, one of the things you might want to do is ask your customer if you can do a photo shoot at their place. Or if your house is that way, then do a photo shoot there kind of thing. But here on this image which wouldn't go below the fold on the page, right? You wouldn't have to scroll so far. I would have this beautiful house, um, and that might be a dining room setup, a bedroom setup, a living room setup, or whatever, with multiple pieces of your furniture put in tastefully. And I look at that, and I'm like, oh, God, I want my home to look like that, right? That's what you want here. Um, I would not open up the next thing, product, product, product. Right. You know nothing about the customer, and you're selling them a product, and then, you know, we got, we got these things going on. We talked about those already. Um, and by the way, if you are actually made in USA, you need to say a lot more about that. So that, that thing said made in the USA, um, and I see nothing about made in the USA here. Right? Where's your factory? Show me the factory. Show me the guy running the factory, Right? So here, right, back to the, uh, the Bentley of steak, they added in, since I last saw this page, they added in Trini. So this is their butcher. He doesn't work for them, but he's, you know, he, they outsource to him. But, you know, the butcher is an important part of this process kind of thing. So they've included him on this about page. So, and, you know, what, what they're trying to do is tell a story of how they, you know, raise their cattle at 8,000 feet in the New Mexico mountains, and therefore it's blah, 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 and here's the local people, and, you know, this, this guy here, he's actually this guy's son, which is a nice little story, right, all that kind of stuff. So for you, in your Made in the USA, you know, if that's worthy of a sticker on the, on the product, which I, I believe it is, I totally agree with that, you got to tell that story, right? So one of your accordions might be, you know, Made in America, you know, and you talk about your factory or factories or vendors or whatever. And, and the, the result of that, you know, higher quality, you know, better control, less toxins, wh- whatever all those things is, you need to, you need to tell that story. Um, and if, it's, if you have one place that you're working with um, that does all of your stuff, then that to me would rate a second about page, right? This about page 
would be about the people at the company, right? And you and that would you know be in the footer, and you'd have another about page which would be about our manufacturing or something like that. Um, I think. Let's see if Bixby is an example of that or not. So Kate has this fabulous, you know, chocolate factory on the coast of Maine. Is that nice that video is? Um, yeah, so here she's got our story, which is her. And then she talks about her mom. Two of them work, at, you know, run the factory together. And, and, and notice, video, right? She comes across as a really nice person. And, you know, she's so sweet. I got to buy chocolate from Kate kind of thing. They talk about their passions, right? And then they have an about the process. So two about pages, one about the people, one about the product. So this talks about how the chocolate's made and, and goes through all the steps kind of thing. So for you, if there's a nice story about the manufacturing side of things, you, you can think about adding that story into your product also or into your, into your site also. All right, so now we're back to our homepage. Oh, by the way, what does resplendent crow, resplendent crow mean to you? I would just put that, you know, explain the story. So, you know, your brand is the resplendent crow. Um, make that part of your brand, right? The name, what's it mean to you? You know, what does it mean to be resplendent, right? Um, you know, you, you've got a crow, and normally crows are black, right? And this one's all colored, right? And so this, this crow is resplendent. He stands out amongst the other crows, right? Um, and when you come to the Resplendent Crow, you get brightly colored, you know, products that make your home stand out or something like that. Think about what that story is, how would you would tell it to a person, and then add it in to your story somewhere, right? Um, Uber point here is, I fully believe that uh, most e-commerce stores are just e-commerce stores. They list products, right? Successful e-commerce stores are e-commerce brands. And what and when you're selling seven thousand dollar products, branding is going to be an important part of that, right? And brand is a lot of things about the product, right? It's the quality and that kind of stuff, but it's also the story you tell, right? And if you don't tell that story, then your customers can't repeat it. So, real example, behind me, these two images, and there's a whole wall of images over here, by the way, right? This is one of my early clients, and he gave these images to me as part of the project. And he's a local photographer. Um, and, and the cool thing is he's a, he's a photographer. I just said that, right? He doesn't call himself a photographer. He's an artist, right? And what he's making is art. It's not photos. And so it's, it's not just a photo he takes, but these are printed on metal. They're glossy. And I've got one over there with some cool effects on it kind of thing. Um, but he spends a lot of time in his, his website talking about him and his brother. It's a, it's a brother team. And... Mm -hmm. Their story about you know how they how they get the photo right all the work they do. So there's one he's he's in the waves in this photo here when it's taken, and you know it takes a day of being in the waves when they're breaking on your head, crashing over you, you know throwing you everywhere, and you get turned upside down and all that kind of stuff. It takes all day long to get one photo that's worthy to put on the wall kind of thing. And he tells that story. And it's part of the interesting thing. Like when people come over, I'll explain. Like, yeah, yeah, that poor guy. He sat in that wave for you know six hours to get this one photo kind of thing. Or he explains how on this one over here, you know, there's a couple times a year that the sunset looks this good, um, and he got it on the week that the color of these flowers, whatever they are, were in bloom, and that happens like once every ten years, right? So, whatever story he's telling, right, and all the process he goes through, and how he lugs his gear everywhere, and all that kind of stuff. That's part of his brand, right? And that's why people look at his, his photography and it's art, right? So for you, how do you elevate your brand um, by, and tell those stories so that people can repeat those stories so they can help elevate your brand also, right? So we're continuing down the page here. What I would do here is I would put in top-level collection. You know, I would mimic whatever your top-level nav is, right? Which I think is going to be like bedroom, dining room and that kind of stuff. I would make them top level pages because they don't know enough to, you know, come here and make a decision on a product, right? Um, hardware, new arrivals. New arrivals is nice. I don't know the difference between new arrivals and newly made, right? That's confusing to me. Um, I talked before about this, putting more of them up there, color galleries. That's actually nice. I like the way that was done. Um, 
here it's a little confusing see this I would put up at the top I would put the space between them um, this is nice I like the fact you know you've got you here this image is way too big but I like the fact you've got it here um, if furniture could tell stories of everyday life in the 50s and 60s we'd all be fascinated I don't know what that means is this 1950s and 1960s or when I first read it, I thought, you know, by the time we're in our 50s or 60s of age, we'd all be fascinating. But I think this means something. And it's, it's vintage furniture. Oh, it is, so it's for your vintage products. But most of what you're selling is new products. So why would you focus on the vintage, right? So here, I would make this a nice little about feature of you um, with the right size image kind of thing. And, and start making that personal connection. Um, I don't like fancy words like founder, but that's just me. Like, you know, I, I call myself owner. Um, I don't say I'm a CEO. I don't say I'm a founder. Um, but that's, you know, it's whatever your brand, right? There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's giving you a little bit of feedback. Um, I like the inbox thing here. Like I said, I hope you're doing Clavio. Please be doing Clavio. Um, and I like the fact it's only on the homepage. And you got the, the I wouldn't even put the link in the footer, but that's, that's fine. But I like the fact that this isn't on every page. Um, and now I've got this wallpaper, this thing in the back. Why is that? How's that part of your brand, right? So here, I have this branding element of this, I don't know, oop, I don't know why it scrolled like that. I got this branding element here. I hit the control button to, and it scrolls for every reason. I got this branding element here of this, it looks like um, stained walls, right? And then I've got this branding element here, where here, of uh, looks like a wallpaper or a graphic for a plant. And now I've got one here, a wallpaper or a graphic for insects. Why? Why do those go to what? Does your brand have a definition of imagery that you use? Right. You want consistency in your imagery because it's part of the consistency in your brand. Right. We go back to this one here, um, Chama Meat. And on the home page, right, we use these little product seals to talk about their value props. And then when we go into a product, we use some of the same product seals and we change them based on different parameters, but there's consistency there, right? That consistency in imagery is going to be consistency in your brand, which is going to help elevate your brand to the Lexus Plus that we're shooting for. So it's one of those things you just come up with, you know, some things like here's the types of imagery we're going to use um, and just be consistent in those. And by imagery, I don't mean photos. I mean, you know, the graphics like this kind of stuff. Um, all right. I think that is enough. How long? I'm talking about an hour and a half. Yeah, you're, you're probably you're probably not even listening anymore. Um, that is enough feedback for now. Um, I, I like the product you're selling, right? So, you know, you're in a, a space where you can be unique. You're doing this stuff in America. There's lots of bright colors. you got fun designs, you know, so it's not like I'm looking at the store going, what are you doing in this space, right? It totally makes sense why you're in this, and you're probably pretty passionate about it too kind of thing. So the stuff that we've talked about is just, you know, taking your, taking your store and starting to make a brand. I've been saying that a lot um, to my clients is you got to start thinking about your brand and elevating your brand and setting that bar to help sell your products and to justify those, those price points that are, you know, the product probably justifies it. But your brand also has to justify it. Think about when you know you buy an iPhone or, you know, or a, a Mac laptop, right? A Mac laptop costs a thousand bucks more than the exact same spec type Dell one. But when you unbox it, you're like, oh my god, look at the packaging, look at the aluminum thing. You're like, this is amazing. Look at just white, you know, all that kind of. That brand allows Apple to charge a thousand bucks more than Dell for a pretty similar product, right? And that's what you have to think about here: is you're asking for Apple level prices. So you need to have an elevated Lexus Plus brand. I'm not going to say Apple brand because it's way up there, right? But that's, that's your goal, right, is to have a brand that is that consistent and that rich and that inspiring for people, okay? Hopefully that all makes sense. I'm happy to talk if you've got any questions. Uh, thanks for listening, if you're still listening.